Hi, hello, how are you? My name is Gab, Gabio, and today I want to talk about Luca. I know I'm a little late to the party, but hey, I had stuff going on, so here we go. Alright, so like most of my reviews, quote unquote, it's gonna be over three different drawings. So the two first ones are gonna be on Procreate, like I usually do, and the last one is gonna be a painting, which I have not done in years, and it's on Paint Tool Sci. It's also the one that took the longest to do. Um, so it's there, I guess, that uh, testing out Paint Tool Sci again last week just made me really focused on Paint Tool Sci. So, you know. Luca was really good. Let's start with that. I really, really liked Luca, and I think Luca was really well queer coded. But let's not get too far. I'm gonna start with the summary of the movie, I guess. Uh, you can watch this video as if you've never watched Luca and you don't mind get spoiled, or you can watch it, watch this video if you watched Luca like two or three weeks ago and don't remember. So I'm gonna do a little summary. And I'm gonna point out the very queer pieces of it because I think it's very important. And I'm gonna talk after why I think this movie is so queer coded. So let's start with a summary. Luca lives under the sea with his very protective family. As a kid, his job is to herd the little fishes that are in their farm. But he does dream of the surface a lot. There are a lot of parallels with the Little Mermaid in this movie, uh, which his parents particularly his mother, are very disapproving of because they are trying really hard to make him scared of the surface because land of monsters. Then, accidentally one day, there's a fish that gets away and he tries to get it back and he meets Alberto, uh, which at first he thought Alberto was a land monster because he was in a full um, deep sea diver suit. Uh, but no, just turns out it's another sea monster like him, except that this one goes on the surface. Alberto pulls Luca out of the water, and after some reservations and fear of repercussions, Luca decides to partake. He learns to walk and helps Alberto create a wooden Vespa, because Alberto, living on the surface, is very into the idea of getting a Vespa because of a poster he has in his room. And then they decide that their dreams, including Luca's now, is to own a Vespa. They work together to make the Vespa work and they do it, they, they drive on it together. They are very close and they make it work really well, except that they go over a rock and almost die, but uh, they separate and then break the Vespa, but survive and they're really happy for the experience more than what happened. And they work together and realize they are a fantastic team. Luca unfortunately falls asleep in Alberto's house, which is going to be a problem. Alberto can do whatever he wants because his father is away for a little bit, so he has no surveillance. We later learn that the father is not away for a little bit, but his father is no longer in Alberto's life. He wakes up in the middle of the night, panicked, comes back to his house. His parents were waiting and announced he was going to spend some time in the deep waters with his uncle to think about his actions and instead, Luca flees and goes back to Alberto. Alberto, nonchalant as he is, proposed that they go to the nearest city to get Mr. Vespa and ask for a brand new Vespa by themselves. They're somewhat afraid because it's literally a human city, but after telling Bruno to shut up a couple of times, they find the city and they're trying to make themselves at home. Calling everyone stupido because Alberto pretends to know the culture of this town, but clearly doesn't. Need Ercole, which has a Vespa and they think at first it's Mr. Vespa himself, but he is an all around evil guy. He is the quote unquote classic queer coded villain of Disney of the movie. It's a bad trope, but it is what it is. He immediately, physically, and emotionally torments Luca by trying to drown him in a fountain, uh, which, you know, Luca cannot go into water because he's gonna transform back into a monster. Until, so he's right there about to die, feeling like it's all over, until they are saved by Julia, a nice girl from the village who happens to hate Hercule. Together, they decide they will bring down Hercule by winning a the town's race, which Hercule has won five years in a row. Julia tries to win every time, but always loses because she is alone. To pay the fees, they pass by Massimo, Julia's dad, a fishman and a sea monster hunter. 
and they offer to help him fish. Luca and Alberto actually know the water really well and know where to fish and where catching fish would be pretty easy. They indicate to Massimo where he should hunt and he actually gets the biggest fish of the season he ever got. Meanwhile, Luca's parents came out of the sea and they are trying to throw water on every single kid they meet thinking it is Luca to find him and bring him back down and potentially into the depth. Luca and Julia talk about Julia's school and their common love for astronomy um, because Luca talks about uh, sleeping under the fish, talking about the moon. Julia then explains that it is not a fish, it is the moon and then shows her book about astronomy, which makes Luca very excited. Luca becomes very enthusiastic with the prospect of a telescope, which doesn't make Alberto particularly happy. Alberto and Luca's original goal were to win the cup, get a Vespa, and to go free on their own. With Luca's deepening friendship with Julia, Alberto is scared that it's getting elusive. In the most frightening moments of the movie, Luca and Alberto get cornered by Ercole and his friends at night, which starts physically hurting them until Luca fights back and they flee. They still continue training for the cup. Julia swims, Alberto eats pasta, and Luca bikes down the hill. But a day, while practicing, Alberto tells him he doesn't know what he's doing and starts going down the hill with Luca, going too fast. They crash into water, and as sea monsters, Luca is pissed scared that Julia would find his identity and not let him go to school with her. Alberto gets very irritated, telling Luca he is never going to get to school anyway because he would never let a sea monster in. When Julia finds them happy that they're alive, Alberto asks if the school accepts different kinds of people. Another little queer coding right there. It, mm, really interesting way to phrase that. Before throwing himself in the sea. Julia first laughs it off until she sees his tail, and then he gets out of the water. Alberto looks at Luca, meaning, see, she's never going to accept us. But Luca and Julia scream, and Luca says, see monster, and run away with Julia, leaving Alberto heartbroken. Julia is not dumb, though she's a very intelligent little girl, and she quickly figures out that Luca is also a sea monster, and asks, she asks him to go. To be safe, she doesn't want him to see to see him hurt. This is a city full of sea monster hunters. Luca finds Alberto and tells him he's going to win the cup for their friendship, so they can escape together as first intended. On the race day, Luca shows up in a full deep sea driver attire, which people laugh at. But he has to swim, and he cannot be seen as a monster. He is pretty successful and goes on to eat the pasta. Hercule laughs at Julia, telling her she is not quick enough to beat him, but Luca is already gone, which makes Hercule really mad. As he drives up the hill, Luca meets his parents, but passes behind them. He goes straight to the top of the hill when it starts to rain. Luca gives up, laughed at by Hercule, like, oh, you're, you're scared of a little rain. But in the distance, an Alberto is approaching with an umbrella to give to Luca. Hercule, as he drives down, make Alberto trip, and he full-on sea monsters in front of everyone. Hercule turns back and tries to harpoon him. Luca starts driving down, also transforming, and brings Alberto with him. They drive down the cliff, avoiding Hercule's harpoons until they win the race. Julia trips at the bottom of the road to avoid a harpoon, and the boys immediately go help her, bringing her back. Massimo, the dad, is scared at first until he realizes the monster is just Luca and Alberto. He accepts them for the little boy he cares for. And everyone does as well. They decide they are in fact the winner, no matter if they were monsters or not. They were the first one to cross the, the winning like line. And everyone accepts the little kid, half because they realize monsters are just like them and Luca and Alberto was not dangerous, and half because none of them want to fight Massimo. Hercules' friends turns against him and throw him in the fountain, which makes his reign of terror and injustice, as Julia would say, end. Massimo, the kid, and Luca's family have a dinner on the surface, with some nice lady who turns out to be sea monsters as well, hiding in plain sight. They have a very nice discussion, which <laughs> actually made me cry a couple of times. Luca's grandma announced that she comes to the surface about once a week, Luca will not be liked by everyone, but she says that he has an eye to find people who will care for him. This scene was heartwarming. Their grandma is so 
queer ally coded, I guess. She is so nice, and like, you can clearly see the fur code, and not everybody will accept him, but he has an eye to who will. It made my heart warm, it's so sad, it's so cute, it's bittersweet, I love this scene. Anyway, Julia goes back to school at the end of the movie. Luca makes goodbye when she's inside the train to go back to her mom's place. Luca asks Alberto if they're going to work on the Vespa now. But Alberto announces that he sold the Vespa and actually gives Luca a train ticket. With the approval of everyone involved, Luca will go to school with Julia. After touching goodbyes that made me cry for the twi two times I saw them, Luca and Alberto separate and go their different ways, promising to come back the following school break while Alberto will stay with Massimo and help him fish. The movie ends with Luca on the train, under the rain, looking out for his future. This movie was really, really good. <laughs> so, that last scene was really important too because it, because it showed that Alberto was looking for a father figure and finally found one, and it is really heartwarming and cute. Quickly, let's go through the queer coding of Alberto and Luca. Um, these little boys, have a crush on each other at least alberto um i think i think it's easy to not see it but our future and like the kind of being mad at luca for being with julia a lot seems a lot like you know when you're in elementary school and you have a crush on someone and that, that person starts hanging out with somebody else and then you're like oh my god i'm losing that crush because like we were friends and now we're not and then you go in a spiral of, oh, what did I do? How did I get here? I'm not going to be with the person I love. That's what it is. That, that's Alberto with a crush on Luca. Luca, I guess, probably has one too. I wouldn't be surprised if in the continuing years of this story, they just have a romance. And I think it would be really... I don't think they should do a movie about it. Well, I think they should because queer movies are already are always good. But, um... I think this movie is pretty, like, um, self-closed. And I know a lot of people were saying that this movie was not queer because, um, the directors and the writers came out saying that this was not meant to be queer-coded. But something that a lot of people need to understand about queer code is that it is so inseparable from cinema codes and, like, in general, and cinema history and cinema readings. That, that a lot of times, queer coding is just regular coding. Queer coding is so entangled with regular cinema that a lot of times you're gonna try to write a regular story and it's gonna be queer, whether you want it or not. The second coding that you can see is the obvious trans coding of these little boys. Um, if you don't squint at all really hard, it is so obvious that going to the surface is a way to change your gender. Like, going to the surface is a code for being different, being queer in general, but I feel like trans is probably the best one because uh, there is a stigma that you need to quote-unquote pass um, because they need to, like, not be found, and then the... It is unfortunate, and I hate to say it, but there is a code of someone who wants you away because you are a monster in disguise and you are ruining the town for everybody and you don't belong here. And then the finale when, like, people discover that maybe they do not pass, but that's not what you need to be accepted. I don't know, I feel like, I don't feel like I'm the best one to talk about the trans code in Luca, but I feel like it is there, and I feel like it is hard to ignore. When you see it with the trans code in mind, it is very heartwarming too, because then the ending of not everybody's gonna accept them, but you have a way to see who will, is also very cute, very charming, and I don't know, it's just a very cute way to see this movie. Next, the story made me fucking cry. There are two very specific times where I cried in a movie, just two times I watched it, and they're back to back, so it's always like a, <laughs> and then a, oh my fucking god! Um, the first one is when their grandmother says her sentence. It is so sad, so cute. I love this scene so much. And then the second one is when they say goodbye. And the only thing about this movie that I feel like they should have changed is... I feel like they shouldn't separate Alberto and Luca. I know it makes sense. But if it were Alberto 
or something like a girl character being separated would not have been accepted <laughs> like i feel like it misses their like kiss or not even kiss because like they're pretty young they're like 13 or 14 so they don't have to kiss but it needed a hug or them staying together it needed like more because it's a love story i feel like i i, I feel like i'm tiptoeing uh, about it but it is a love story and uh, finally, as someone who studies animation, this animation was incredible. I love this animation so much. The um, character design and the way they animated was like kind of like ceramic puppets, but it was so good. I really, really liked the way it was very fluid animation. Pixar never fails, of course, but there was something about like the models. I really, really like the shading of the models. I think that's the thing. Like the very blushy it was so, so good. And finally, this this drew me over the edge for why this movie is so good. The voice acting is in the original version is incredible. I was really impressed that Lucas Jacob Tremblay was surprisingly good. So we're Jack Dylan Grazer in the role of Alberto and Emma and Emma Berman in the voice of Julia. They were excellent. It was particularly surprising after the disappointing voice acting that I saw in Raya and the Last Dragon, which honestly left me on the edge because it was not a very good voice acting in that particular movie. This movie was really, really good on multiple fronts, so I've summary, I've summarized the movie, I've summarized the queer code, and I've talked about the animation, so I think this <laughs> video is already long enough. So here is the montage. Alright, so final verdict. Overall, this movie was a solid 9 out of 10. It's a very different pick for Pixar, I feel like. It was a lot less conceptual than Pixar usually strives for. So if you think about Inside Out, uh, Soul, um, you know, the Pixar like themes are usually like, what if this but has emotion and it's very conceptual and it makes you think a lot about the state of human being and human life and kind of puts you in this metaphorical way of like what is going on and it makes you think about humans with inanimate objects a lot of the time but it just makes it just as unique it is a very simple story too which caters to more experiences i mean sometimes like the only i feel like pixar movie that you can summarize as quickly as you can well I went to a big summary earlier <laughs> but like basically the plot of luca is uh, two sea monsters come out of the water and try to hide their identity while they're trying to win a race to free together on a Vespa. Very simple story. Like, the very summary is very easy to do, but I feel like the only one other that is as simple to explain would be Toy Story 1, which is, um, you know what Toy Story 1 is. But I feel like all the others are a little more complicated, but I feel like it makes it so much as enjoyable at least. It is so good. Uh, Luca is definitely one of my favorite Pixar movie in a while. Uh, the writers came out confirming, as I said, that it was not meant to be queer, but I don't care. That's a double edge with queer coding. It is everywhere because it is literally in every code ever. And it was really good. Um, and for Disney, this movie was particularly queer coded. Like, it was not, it's not a queer movie by any means. But it's queer-coded, and I don't feel like it's queer-coded in the way that it was purposefully trying to cater to gay people and then be like, <laughs> but it is queer-coded. I, I don't think... One thing I was really disappointed as was Arcalay's design, because he's effeminate, he wears pink, and he's seemingly unable to grow facial hair and quote-unquote look masculine. 
which plays some stereotypes of gay people, and like he's the villain. I hate it. Uh, I love this movie. It made me cry, but also captured the essence of childhood friendship, what it is like to see it, like, and the feeling of being free, even if it may just be for a summer, and it was so, so, so good. I really recommend to watch it, or even rewatching if you missed or didn't see the queer code the first time, so you can rewatch it with the trans code in mind, and then maybe your eyes are gonna be like, oh wow, this is really cool. It makes that movie so much better, in my opinion. Sorry for this rambly video, I'm trying to talk fast, but I'm trying- this is getting way too long. <laughs> um, I'm gonna try to be- I had a very long week last week, so next week is gonna be much better, so I should come back with more, um, regular content i guess uh thanks a lot for watching my social media was at the bottom of the screen for the most of the video i'm trying that this week but if not it's gonna be around here somewhere it's also in the description thanks a lot for watching and see you next time